Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. Just a note before we get started that if you're ever interested in private one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I do offer that service via Google Meet or through Zoom. If you are interested, please feel free to email me at this address for additional information. Now on to the solution. If you need to pause the video and read the problem to yourself to get reacquainted with it, please go ahead and do so. We know that the equation for average speed is equal to a distance, which we have symbolized by delta x, divided by the total amount of time traveled. It's going to be useful to actually solve this equation for delta x. So let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the total time. And by doing that, we can cancel the total time on the right-hand side. And then we can see that the distance traveled, remember that's just delta x, is going to equal our average speed multiplied by the total time. Now what's interesting about this problem is that there's sort of two phases of the motion. There is the phase during which the driver is driving with a constant speed, but then there's a separate phase when she stops for 22 minutes to take a rest. So we need to divide the story into those two different segments. So let's try to represent that as follows. So what we have done is draw a timeline to represent those two different phases of the motion. So along the purple timeline, we're going to call the time traveled there T1. And we know that the speed, which should be V1, not V2, the speed during that time was 89 and a half kilometers per hour. For the second phase of the motion, when the driver takes a break, the amount of time during that break was 22 minutes. We've called that T2. And then the speed during that portion of the travel was zero because the driver was at rest. Now what we're going to do next is represent the distance traveled during those two intervals. Now remember, distance traveled is average speed multiplied by time. So for the purple portion, we could say that the distance traveled is going to be the average speed, which was 89.5 during that phase of the motion, multiplied by the time, which was T1. For the second phase of the motion, we would say delta x, we'll put a subscript 2 there, is equal to the average speed, which is 0 multiplied by the time t2. Now, of course, you'll notice 0 times t2 is 0. So, in fact, there is no distance traveled during that portion of the motion. So far, so good. The next thing we need to do, in fact, is change the 22 minutes into hours. And the reason for that is because the speeds are expressed in terms of kilometers per hour. So you want to just take your calculator out and take 22 minutes and divide that by 60 minutes per hour. You're going to get 0.367 hours. So let's make that adjustment. The next thing we're going to do is take a look at the entire journey as a whole. And when we say the entire journey, we're talking about the entire timeline here. So let's list some items we know for that entire timeline. We would know that the total time traveled along that entire timeline would equal the T1 plus the T2. That's the total amount of time spent traveling. We don't know T1, so we'll leave that as a variable, but we do know T2. That was determined to be about 0.367 hours. Another thing that we do know is the total distance traveled. So we're going to call that delta x total. And you can see that that would be the delta x1 added to the delta x2. So we'll take delta x1, which was represented as 89.5 t1, and then add that to delta x2. But of course, delta x2 was 0. So we would be adding 0, and therefore we don't even need to include it. Now, the other thing we know for the entire duration of the journey was the average speed. The question noted what that value was for the entire journey. Let's go back up to the problem and just check that out. The average speed for the entire journey was 77.8 kilometers per hour. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fill that in. 77.8 kilometers per hour. So now we can take all of these data. We have time for the entire journey distance for the entire journey, and then the average speed for the entire journey, and we're going to plug it into our handy equation. Remember, average speed was the total distance divided by the total time. So we would have 77.8, which is our average speed, equals the total distance of 89.5 T1 over the total time, which is T1 plus the 0.367.
So now it's a matter of just solving for T1. We move from physics to the realm of algebra. So there's a couple of ways of thinking about that. One way would be to put the number on the left side over a one, and then perhaps you've learned in a math class to cross multiply. So you're gonna multiply those two quantities together and then set it equal to the product of those two quantities multiplied together. So let's go ahead and set that up. Now our job is to try to continue solving for T1. We're gonna go ahead and distribute the 77.8. So when we multiply it by T1, we'll have 77.8 times T1. And then when we multiply 77.8 times 0.367, we get about 28.53. Okay, next we will subtract from both sides of the equation the 77.8 T1. That leaves us with 28.53 is equal to 60.97 T1. And then we divide both sides of the equation by 60.97. In fact, I made a very silly error here in my arithmetic. When we subtracted on the right hand side, we should have gotten 11.7 T1. So forgive me for that. Then we can divide both sides by 11.71. I've got too many numbers on my calculator here, but still no excuses. So now we have 2.2. 4, 4 hours is equal to T1. Now let's be careful about how we interpret that answer because the question asked, if we go all the way back up to part A, it said how much time is spent on the trip? On the trip. Well, the trip had a total time, let's not forget, of T1 plus 0.367. So we're not done quite yet here. To find the total time, which was for the entire trip, we have to add T1 and T2. We just found T1 and we know T2 from earlier, once we add those together, we get the total time, and that comes out to about 2.81 hours. So that's the correct answer to part A of the problem. The entire trip took 2.81 hours. And now for the part B, how far does the person travel? So what they're asking for there is the total distance, the total distance traveled. Well, that's our delta X total. We can see that equaled 89 and a half times T1. So we're going to come down here and we're going to say that the delta x total, which was the 89 and a half times t1, that would be 89 and a half times the t1 value, which works out to approximately 218. This is a distance and these speeds were measured in kilometers per hour. So we come out with kilometers as our unit for that total distance traveled during this journey. And that is the correct answer for parts A and B.